Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, basically a very simple explanation of how the stock market works. Now, I'm going to be doing this video a little bit different than my usual videos. Um, I actually spent a long time trying to figure out the best way to convey this information. And I started recording this with all my notes written on the board. And uh, I just didn't feel like it was coming across the right way. So I started over completely and I basically drew like my pictorial representation of this. And then I have my notes on my paper here and I'm going to read off this, um, for this video anyway, uh, what my notes are. And then with this diagram I drew up here, kind of show you where each part fits in here. Um, so the first part of this basically is um, a stock or a share. Um, a stock is a piece of the company. Uh, and when a company needs to raise money, it issues shares. And when they issue shares for the first time, this is called an IPO or an initial public uh, public offering. Um, so that's basically this right here. You have your, you have a company, and then when they do the initial public offering, they offer it to investors. Okay. Here's the thing with this: a lot of people don't realize this, but um, the company only makes money one time from this with the initial public offering. Or if they continue, if they offer shares again down the road. Um, they will make money off that, but when the stock price changes, the company isn't making or losing money. They make money one time off of this IPO or the initial offering of any future shares. So this is where the company does the IPO or a new offering of shares, sells it to investors, and they make their money one time, and they use that money to conduct business. Um, the pricing during the IPO is determined by two key factors, number one being how much the company is estimated to be worth. And number two is the number of shares being issued. Um, so what happens here is after this, after they sell to the investors, the stock will continue to trade being bought and being sold on an exchange. An example of this would be the New York Stock Exchange. Um, this is all based on the perceived value of the stock. That's why this, this is kind of shown here the buying and the selling of the stock all leads towards this perceived value of what that piece of that company is actually worth. Um, perceived value is the worth that a product or service has in the mind of the consumer. Perceived value of a company changes over time and that's why the investor, uh, investors continue to trade the stock. If the perceived value of the company pretty much stayed the same, you wouldn't see people buying or selling the stock. Uh, the price would stay relatively the same and people who invested in it would likely just hold on to it. Uh, but because the perceived value of that company changes based on decisions and anything else going on with that company, the stock continues to trade on the stock market exchange. Um, most investors are looking to buy a stock when the perceived value is lower and sell it when it is higher. Uh, now this would be a bullish investor. Uh, let me just explain to you bullish versus bearish uh, in case you don't know what that means. Um, the way that this was explained to me is the way that a bull attacks with its horns in an upward direction versus the way a bear attacks with its claw in a downward direction. Uh, a bullish investor is like attacking like a bull where they're, where they're doing their attack in an upward motion whereas a bear attacks downwards. That's why bullish investors are making money from rising stock prices. Bearish investors are making money from falling stock prices. So that's the difference between those two there in case you didn't know that. Um, now, a bearish investor, on the other hand, they're going to make money from falling stock prices, and they do this by short selling a stock. Um, this is where um, they are looking to sell borrowed shares at a higher price and then buy them back at a lower price. Um, short selling is very confusing, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I've never short sold a stock, and it's kind of a more advanced trading strategy, and um, I kind of keep it simple, guys. I don't really get into short selling there, but it, it, it is something to note that not everyone is making money from rising stock prices. Some people make their money when the stock price goes down, depending on the type of investor you are. Okay, there are two types of analysis that investors uh, typically use when they're buying a stock. It's either technical stock analysis or fundamental stock analysis. Um, technical stock analysis is all based on charts and numbers for the most part, and you're looking for patterns and trends. Um, fundamental stock analysis is all based on company strength. So somebody who's doing fundamental analysis of a stock would be looking at like profit loss summaries, um, third uh, quarterly earnings, different things like that coming from the company. They're looking at the overall strength of the company and for the most part they're, they're going to ignore those day-to-day -day swings or the week-to-week swings because they're usually buying it for the long run. 
Whereas with technical stock analysis, it's usually done by a swing trader who is trying to swing trade based on the moving up and the moving down of the stock based on the volatility. So people doing technical stock analysis are generally holding the stock for a much shorter period of time. And fundamental analysis is when you're doing a uh, position trade with that, so you're holding it for a long duration of time. So let me talk about dividends. A lot of people don't realize what a dividend is. Um, mature companies that are well established pay dividends to shareholders. Um, this is basically like a little bonus saying, hey, thank you for investing in us. We want to encourage you to hold on to our stock. So we're going to give you a little bit of money either quarterly or yearly. Usually it's no more than quarterly. Um, so they're going to give you a percentage every single year or every single whatever the duration is, um, a percentage of whatever that stock value is worth. So uh, however much you have invested, they'll kick you back a percentage based on how much money they're making that quarter or whatever the factor is for the most part. But uh, you generally only see a div uh, dividend with well-established companies. So if a company just had like an IPO and they're, they're new to the scene, don't expect to have a dividend. They're usually the companies that have been around for a lot longer. Um, something else to note is the share price operates completely independently of dividends. So the share price may be down, but it may still pay a higher dividend or the same dividend it paid last quarter. So share price doesn't really affect the amount they're paying out in the dividend. Um, some investors buy dividend stocks only because they're looking to seek regular stock market income. Just this is another way that some people trade. I mean, everybody has their own strategy. Some people strictly buy dividend stocks because they only want to make money from that whatever percentages per quarter or per year off those stocks, and that's all they're looking for. Okay, so because when you buy a stock, you are owning a piece of that company, this is going to give you voting rights. So that's what this line is right here. This dashed line that goes around the investors, um, and you own basically your voting rights is all based on how many shares you hold of the company or how much of the company you own. You have a right to vote in company decisions. Um, so voting rights, uh, a share is a piece of a company and as, as part owner you have a vote in how it is run. Voting rights are typically equal to the number of shares you own unless the company has issued different classes of shares. Um, sometimes you'll see this with a private company that decides to eventually go public they may offer people who work for the company who, who own private shares to have more voting rights than people who are buying into it publicly. And this can be to basically maintain control of the company or make it so you can't so easily buy control of the company. Um, classes of shares, it says uh, shareholders have different levels of voting rights. And this can make the company more difficult to take over and help them maintain control. Like I said, it's typical of a private company that goes public down the road. So your shareholders collectively vote on a board of directors as well as major company decisions. Um, your board of directors is a group of individuals elected to establish corporate management policies and make decisions on major company issues. Um, and that's kind of interesting. People don't realize this. And um, I've gotten ballots in the mail before. You, uh, I think once a year you get those when you go through and you vote on the board of directors. And a lot of people don't take the time to do that. And uh, you really should because you own part of that company. Even if it's a small fraction of a fraction of a percent, you are a part owner of that company. And, they, and, you're, and whatever decision you make, whatever your vote is, does count towards something. So you own a little piece of that company and you should exercise your right to vote in company decisions. Um, let's see here. Next, I talked about a, a stock transaction. So this is where this would happen. In this, on, the, on the exchange here, you're going to have a stock transaction. Uh, with a transaction, there must be a buyer and a seller. In order to buy shares, someone needs to sell them to you. So you can't necessarily, I mean, for the most part, with a high, high volume stock, with a lot of people trading, um, a large cap stock, there's always going to be somebody willing to buy and always going to be somebody willing to sell. Um, if you were trading a small cap stock, you might run into an issue where you're trying to sell and there's nobody there to buy, or you're trying to buy and nobody's selling right now. But for the most part, if you're trading any stocks listed on like the New York Stock Exchange or like a NASDAQ listed stock, they're so high volume, there will always be buyers when you're trying to sell and sellers when you're trying to buy. Um, so this is kind of where I'm talking about this tug of war. I'm sorry, I'm right in the way here. This is the tug of war concept of the stock market. Like I said, the perceived value of a stock changes on a minute to minute or day to day basis. Um, 
And it's in a constant tug of war of bearish and bullish pressure, which we talked about before. So anytime you're seeing the stock change direction, it's kind of like picture the tug of war versus the bear and the bulls, where one person is winning and one person is losing. Every spot that I circled here on this is representing, for the most part, indecision. This is where there's a tug of war, and whenever you see a stock going into an uptrend or into a downtrend, it means either the bears won the tug of war or the bulls won the tug of war. So where you can see, a after this indecision period here, you see the stock go into an uptrend. This would be more bullish pressure than bearish pressure, or more people are buying the stock as opposed to selling the stock. Um, if you want to think of this in, in terms of like psychology, this would be greed, uh, the human emotion of greed here when the stock is in an uptrend. That means that um, it's all based off the principles of supply and demand. So when there is a high demand for the stock and there's not as much of a supply because there's more people buying than selling the stock, the price will go up because that's in more, there's more demand for that. All right. So then you see where it will go into a period of indecision again. That's where buyers are not willing to pay any more for the stock and the sellers are gonna kind of go back into that tug of war or the bears versus the bulls here. And then in this case here where the stock goes into a downtrend, that's where there's more bearish pressure or more selling pressure than there is buying pressure at this point. Um, the emotion in this trend here would be fear. Um, that's because people are afraid of losing money, they're selling the stock because it's going down. Uh, there's more people selling than buying so the market has an overwhelming supply and when there's too much of something in the market, the price is going to go down. So any of these periods here where a stock is basing or consolidating, those are periods of indecision. And then uptrends and downtrends, it's all based on that tug of war principle of whoever's in control of the market at that time. So that's pretty much how that works there. And this all happens during the, the stock transactions here. And um, that happens on the stock market exchange. Um, and something else I want to mention here too, in case you didn't realize this, just like anything else, there's hours to the stock market. Uh, I know the New York Stock Exchange is open 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, it's closed on holidays. It's Monday through Friday. And uh, they do have the right to close the stock market if there's something crazy going on. So if there was like a natural disaster or something was happening where they didn't want people to make quick decisions and sell they can close the stock market. They have the right to do that. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, I just want to briefly mention um, volume. So volume is basically how many shares change hands each day. Um, high daily volume is attractive because it's easier to buy and sell and less, and there's less slippage at that point. So let me explain that to you. Uh, when you're trading a high volume stock, that makes it so for the most part, there's a buyer when you're willing, ready to sell and a seller when you're looking to buy. Um, slippage is a difference between what somebody is willing to pay for the stock and what somebody is willing to um, sell the stock for. That's called basically the, the slippage. There's a, buy, there's a bid and then there's an ask price for the stock and the quote falls somewhere in the middle. Um, the higher volume a stock trades at, the less difference there is between those prices. And then the lower volume the stock trades at, there's a greater difference between those prices. So one of the attractive things about trading a high volume stock is you're going to have less difference in the dollar amount or of what somebody's willing to buy the stock for and what somebody's willing to sell it for. So that's what's attractive about trading a high cap or um, high volume stock. So when I'm saying high cap, that refers to that refers to market capital or market cap. Uh, market cap is basically the number of outstanding shares times the price of a single share of the stock. Um, and for the most part, like I said, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ traded stocks all have a high market cap. Um, that's pretty much it guys. That's like the basics on how the stock market works. Um, I'm just going to run through it one more time, this chart on top, just because it's, it's cool to understand how this basically works. So when the company has the initial public offering of the stocks, they make, one they make money one time off the selling of those stocks to these investors here. Um, based on company decisions, the perceived value of that stock changes over time. And as such, there's more buying and selling pressure at any given point in time. Uh, if you picture this as like a scale, uh, one side being buying and one side being selling, you can see where, the, where they can tip the scale with more people buying and more people selling. And this will directly affect the share price, as you see down here. That's where the share price is in either a period of indecision or an uptrend or a downtrend. Um, as an investor, you have the right to vote 
on a board of directors and major company decisions. And as such, those decisions also affect the perceived value of that stock. And um, well-established companies will pay off a dividend at certain periods of time. But that's pretty much how the stock market works. And that's why shares of a stock continue to trade. People don't just hold on to them forever. So that's pretty much all I got for this video. Uh, I just wanted to mention too, if anybody is interested in my own personal stock market trading strategy, I do have an ebook I've been working on for the last three months that I just finished up. And um, I basically have been studying the stock market for quite some time now. And I've read dozens of different books and guides and I've talked to different people that have been trading for years. And what I did is I pulled all the best information from those sources and I packaged it up in this ebook, which is basically my own personal stock market trading strategy. Um, my trading is based on technical stock analysis and I'm generally doing a swing trade where I'm holding the stock anywhere from a couple days to maybe a week or two. Not a long trade, it's kind of a shorter duration trade. Um, and I've actually had pretty good luck with that. I've consistently been able to make a couple hundred dollars every week uh, with about one to two hours of my time being spent looking into stocks and doing the actual trading itself. So if you're interested in that, I will link up to it in the description. But other than that, if you guys have any video ideas for me or anything you want me to cover or anything you want me to explain better, drop me a comment below and I'll be sure to answer those. But thank you guys for watching.